Hi, my name's Alex, and today I'll be doing an interview with our outgoing president of the SU, Hope. Hello. Okay, so let's kick off. Um, I know before you were president, you also had a stint as an education officer. Mm -hmm. So what made you get involved in student politics? Oh, good question. Well, um, so my first year, I literally wasn't really involved in anything kind of to do with student politics. I literally just did my degree, did a lot of socialising. It was very fun. Um, but I've kind of, I've always been political, um, kind of in general, but I'd never, yeah, hadn't kind of really got involved in activism before that. And then at the start of my second year, um, kind of started getting involved with some of environmental campaigning that was happening on campus. Um, and then kind of like uh, Warwick Free Education was created in my second year and I was kind of like there from the start of that because um, I was really passionate about like the issue of free education. Um, and yeah, and then just kind of like went from there really. So since since the beginning of my second year, just been involved in kind of lots of activism. And then I kind of, even though I hadn't really thought about it before, in the end it kind of made sense to put myself forward for to be a sabbatical officer. So I did. So what were one of the main reasons why you decided to go for president after you went after your term as education? What were the main reasons, yeah. did you say? Um, there, yeah, I guess there were multiple reasons. So um, I did kind of toy for a while with potentially running for education again because I did actually really, really like the education officer role. Um, but I think that... Um, I just felt it was it was mainly I guess from a kind of like political perspective I just strongly felt you know that you know the SU should be inherently political um, and that it should be proud of kind of like those values and be a kind of like very strong like campaigning union um, and I felt like that kind of was reflected in my manifesto in my campaign it was a platform that I wanted to run on um, that I felt was it was an important flat platform to have kind of as part of the presidential race um, and so. Yeah, and I think also having a year's worth of experience just set you like set you up well to kind of um, take on the president's role. So, how yeah. connected do you feel the SU is to the student body? Um, I think that the SU is very connected to the student body in terms of how it impacts students, even if students don't realise it. So you know the fact that we've got over ten thousand students are involved. I think it's over ten thousand students are involved in the society. Over five thousand students are involved in the club that's like the majority of the student body who are engaged in student activities, but many of them might not even kind of realise that it's actually the SU that runs societies, it's the SU that runs club, that runs sports clubs as well, obviously in, in collaboration with Warwick Sport. So I think that in terms of how it impacts students, I think it is well connected, but I definitely think that there's a lot of work to be done, as is the case with actually all students unions across the country, it is like a national problem in terms of students recognising that they are part of the students' union, feeling kind of like a sense of ownership and, you know, kind of wanting to get involved in every single way. Um, yeah, but like I said, I think it is it is a national um, kind of like problem facing the sector, facing kind of students' unions. Would you say actually there are quite, like, would you say that's a problem unique to student unions or, or just democracy in general in this country? Because I feel like... Um, there seems to be a correlation between involvement and student, student or well, any type of election really. Like if you see just like uh, the national, just for the national elections, mm. it's only sixty percent, seventy percent turnout at most. Yeah. Local elections, it's thirty percent turnout. Mm. Student union elections, what is it like? Twenty five. Twenty five. Yeah. So it's it's sort of roughly the same. Yeah. Um, just um, that involvement with democracy. What do you think that says for our society in general? Oh, I wasn't expecting that question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that, like, I think that, r particularly with kind of, like, young people and students, potentially that is something that is starting to change. I mean, I think that what we saw with the last general election, uh, the recent general election, was kind of, like, a big, quite a, quite a big surge, not a massive surge, but quite a big surge in um, kind of turnout, particularly for young people and students, um, getting kind of, like, mobilised mobilized around a lot of key issues. Um, so I think that, kind of, like, nationally that kind of like potentially bucks the trend a bit. I mean, I think obviously in general elections, yeah, we have a turnout around sort of like 60, 60 to 70%, which is pretty good. Obviously, it'd be great if everyone voted. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I th it's an interesting question. I don't think, I don't think it's necessarily like a, a crisis of democracy mm. or anything. Um, but I think that, yeah, I think that there are kind of m many ways in which apathy potentially kind of like manifests across society I don't think it is just unique to like students or and, and students unions um but yeah I mean I I hope that potentially the way things are going like politically that might start to change maybe do you think it matters that turnout is sometimes so low 
both in student union elections and generally in elections? Well, I would say it, yeah, definitely matters. It's obviously not. It's obviously not relevant, and I think that you know anything that we can do to try and kind of like up meaningfully up um, turnout is is really important. I mean, I think it's interesting how pretty much every single. I mean, I think I've seen on every single um, democracy and development officer manifesto over the last however many years I've been here that increased voter turnout is kind of like one of the top priorities, which completely makes sense, and I I like commend people for for kind of prioritizing that. But I think it is interesting in, in terms of how we actually do that. I think mm. that we've seen things like in previous years, we've had people raise quorum and with the view that, oh, well, if we raise quorum, then more people will vote. When unfortunately, I don't think it works like that. People vote because they have a reason to vote. People vote because they believe that their vote is going to make a difference because they think that it's actually going to affect change. Um, they don't vote because, you know, they because like quorum is higher or whatever. Um, and I think also... I know there are like other students' unions that encourage people to vote by like incentives and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. like free things, um, and I'm not like always opposed to free things, but I think that again, if we want kind of an actual thriving democracy and a participatory democracy, we don't just want it to be this kind of people just sit and click a button online and vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want that, but we more than anything, we want people to actually be engaged with the issues. So just going back to your time as part of the sabbatical team in general, mm -hmm. what would you say has been one of your highlights? Over the last two years or this year? This year. This no, year. Yeah. Ah, okay. Um, I would say that one of the highlights of this year was definitely the kind of set of wins that we got around rents. Um, because obviously housing is just an issue that affects, well, it affects everyone, but it's kind of very, very, we know from like our own member engagement research that housing is very kind of like high up on people's agendas. We know that there's kind of a student rent kind of crisis across the country in terms of rent soaring and that combined with like a cost of living crisis as well. Um, and so the kind of uh, right at the start of the year we went to the university we sort of had a list of three three key demands that we kind of said we want the, their housing proposals for on, on campus accommodation to reflect that and they actually kind of listened to us mm. which was great and like factored in all of our all of our um, kind of proposals so meant that we've kind of established more of a PG housing ladder now um, We've kind of like managed to maintain the prices of some of the lower end halls, um, so that was really really good. Um, that was definitely a highlight. What else was a highlight? Um, I think also all of the work we've been doing around the We Get Consent campaign mm -hmm. is really exciting because that was a campaign that a little bit came out of nowhere in the sense that it wasn't explicitly on my manifesto, but it's just sort of at the start of the year there were various things that came together and I thought actually this is something that is really really important to kind of tie together all of the work that's happening in in the area of sexual violence and I think considering it's the first year it's been set up it's gone really well I think a lot of people are aware of it you know um, we've given out like thousands of wristbands thousands of leaflets our videos been viewed like 7,000 times or whatever um, and so I think that hopefully <laughs> come on next year's team, that will be like the start of a kind of like embedded campaign which is tackling a really important issue and I think some of the kind of events that unfolded this year meant that it was even more important to I think a lot of students on campus and we've had a lot of engagement with it so yeah I would say that the, those two are probably two of my highlights this year. To anyone watching who may be interested in running for either sabbatical or any other position within the SU, do you think there are any misconceptions about the roles which people mm. don't know that they should know if they're looking to run or are interested in getting involved in the future? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think that there's definitely a kind of perception that you sort of have to be, you know, in a certain clique or very much kind of like in the inner workings of the SU in order to run, um, which definitely isn't true. I mean, I think it's obviously fair to say that people that are kind of already very involved in the SU or that know a lot about it, that does give you kind of like some sort of, not necessarily advantage, but it helps if you're running an election. Mm. But I would say that you absolutely can run in a, in a SAB election and win with like not being involved kind of like with the SU mm. at all. Um, and I think that, yeah, I would encourage anyone who's just, basically anyone who's just, you know, passionate about like sees issues around them on campus and is like, you know, this needs to change, this isn't fair, like students are being treated badly and want to change it, then just do it basically. You, you know, running an effective campaign isn't kind of, you don't have to like be from a certain like demographic or be from a certain kind of like student group or anything. Um, yeah, so I'd say there probably are a lot of other misconceptions <laughs> as well, but I'd say that's probably possibly one of the main ones. And finally, um, what are you looking to do after 
your time at the FC final finishes? <laughs> You're so. going to ask me that question. <laughs> that traumatic question that everyone's yeah. asking me. Um, I don't actually know yet, so I think that um, I definitely would ideally love to kind of stay in the kind of general world of campaigning mm. um, and political stuff. Um, definitely quite keen to get out of student politics because yeah. I've done my time. <laughs> Five years is quite long. Um, but, yeah, I think that and it's something that kind of keeps me generally involved in, like, activism or campaigning would be amazing um, because, yeah, it's, it's definitely, like, kind of the biggest passion of mine. So, fingers crossed, if someone will hire me, then any, we'll see. Any particular issues of interest? <clears throat> um, not really, just kind of generally generally sort of wanting to make society a more equal but mm. a more equal and kind of better place I guess that sounds so cheesy I didn't <laughs> didn't mean that to sound so cheesy but there are kind of loads and loads of issues that yeah. could come into that um like I said I think from the last general election there's you know education housing healthcare, literally so many things that are kind of a lot of people are galvanized around so I would happily campaign around a lot of those things so. <laughs> cool anyway I think that's a good note as I need to end on so th thank you very much Hope thank you it's a pleasure <laughs>